OK, yeah, so I, I'm a, Amir, and I'll talk about a slightly different title. Uh, so a key goal of machine vision uh, as a field is to uh, build uh, algorithms and models for understanding rich visual scenes, uh, like the one we see here. And people are very good at this. Uh, even if they see uh, occluded objects, uh, et cetera, they can uh, make sense of what's going on. Uh, and then we can, uh, for example, answer questions like, who is eating the banana? And that's pretty easy for humans to do. Uh, so what representations uh, are the adequate ones for building uh, machine vision algorithms for such complex uh, tasks? Uh, so one representation of complex images is maybe short captions, but that's perhaps not informative enough. Another is more elaborate uh, text descriptions. But really, if you think about text descriptions like the one you have here, saying a woman wears a white shirt, et cetera, uh, that's a sort of a, a verbal or serialized description of a more uh, formal or structured representation. Uh, and it'll be nice to use these structured representations for uh, vision algorithms, since these are easier for us to uh, work with. Um, Right, so if we think about this formally, what, what's happening in a complex images? There are objects, and we can think of those as nodes, and relations are uh, between objects. Uh, we can think of those as edges, and attributes can also uh, be incorporated into this. And indeed, people have thought about these types of representations. Uh, so there's a long line of work uh, around this, but uh, a nice uh, formulation of, the, of this approach is uh, via a notion called scene graphs uh, by uh, Johnson uh, et al. Uh, where it essentially does what I just said. Namely, it represents an image via the set of objects uh, in the image, along with their uh, attributes and relations. And it does so uh, via a graph, which is a very natural object uh, to work with in our context. Uh, so scene graphs are a very uh, attractive uh, sort of a, a way to describe complex semantics uh, in images. And the question is how to build algorithms that use these uh, efficiently for downstream applications that we're interested in. Uh, so uh, we've been working around this uh, problem for a while now. And I want to address some key challenges in the context of uh, learning and using scene graphs. Uh, one is the basic problem of translating an image into a scene graph. Uh, the other is the reverse direction of uh, taking a scene graph and generating an image out of that. And I'll uh, conclude with some discussion of uh, uh, how these uh, uh, notions uh, can be used in video. Okay. Uh, so I'll start with the problem of uh, mapping images to scene graphs. So you have an image and you want to find the corresponding uh, scene graph. Uh, so there's, uh, we have uh, two uh, works uh, on this that I'll describe with uh, uh, my students, uh, Rohi Herzig and uh, Mushiko Rabo, and uh, colleagues, uh, Jonathan Berendt and Gal Chechik. Uh, so here's basically the, the basic machine learning problem here. Uh, we have an image, and we want to build some model that will take that image and translate it into a scene graph. Okay? Uh, and we can then use these scene graphs for many tasks like question answering, et cetera. Uh, so luckily, there, uh, people have begun to collect uh, resources that have uh, uh, training data for this task, namely images alongside their uh, uh, scene graphs that have been annotated by uh, humans. Uh, this is the visual genome uh, data set, perhaps the largest data set of this uh, kind. So this can be used for uh, both learning this mapping and evaluating it. Uh, so that this is the data set that we use in this context. Now, and there's, uh, uh, there's a big question here of what should this uh, model look like? What is the right architecture for a model that takes an image as input and outputs a, a graph like this? Uh, so this is something that we thought about uh, for a while, and we tried to characterize what are sort of the necessary uh, um, components and invariances and uh, structural constraints on such a model. And a key observation that we made is that this model should be equivariant to orders to the order in which the bounding boxes uh, are provided uh, in the image. Namely, if you just change the names of the boxes, the output graph should change in the same way. Okay, so this, uh, uh, this is known as equivariance. Uh, and we, we thought, uh, what does that mean? What does this uh, sort of structural constraint mean as to what, uh, how we should construct the model? Uh, and we came up with, we were, we were able to prove a result saying that if you want this uh, structure or this property in your model, uh, your architecture needs to have a certain uh, form. So it's not an arbitrary, fully connected uh, architecture, but it needs to have a lot of symmetries uh, and structure in it. 
which will give you this uh, permutation invariance uh, property. And we showed, uh, we showed this uh, formally. Uh, and indeed, when we use this uh, architecture for learning uh, image to uh, sync graph mappings, uh, we obtained the best results at the time for this task uh, in terms of the accuracy of the predicted sync graph. OK, so that's uh, quite nice. Uh, but there's a key uh, uh, challenge here and difficulty is that in order to learn these mappings the way I just described, you need the label data. Namely, you need a data set like Visual Genome where you have images and their corresponding uh, scene graphs. And it's hard to imagine that this could considerably scale in the sense of collecting huge uh, volumes of data of that sort. Okay? So it's hard to collect label data for training these uh, uh, image to scene graph models. Uh, and there are other optimization challenges that arise. Uh, and another thing is that you maybe uh, we, tra we learn an image to scene graph mapping, but what we're actually interested in is using this scene graph in some downstream task. So we thought about this for a while, and we, we said that what we really want is to train a, an image to scene graph map, but that is used in some uh, end task. Uh, and where there are no scene graph labels uh, uh, provided, because these are uh, challenging to collect. Um, right, so we came up with this idea of differentiable uh, scene graphs. Namely, you have a task that's not scene graph prediction. So for example, here we, uh, we looked at the task of referring relation uh, classifier. Uh, so you have a, sentence, uh, a triplet like man throwing frisbee, and you just want to find uh, uh, these, uh, 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 the man and the frisbee uh, in the image. So much uh, simpler problem than image to scene graph. Okay? And what we proposed for this task was to uh, map the image into an intermediate uh, scene graph where we do not have supervision for that uh, part. And then we map this intermediate scene graph into the output task for which we do have uh, labels. Okay? So the scene graph here serves as a sort of latent uh, representation for which we do not have uh, uh, supervision, but we can uh, use it within the model. And we actually found that when we train such a model, the scene graphs, these latent scene graphs that we come up with, actually uh, are uh, often quite accurate description of what's actually happening in the image, although we didn't directly train for that. So that was a nice uh, outcome of this uh, uh, approach. Uh, and we indeed, we applied this uh, model uh, uh, or this approach to learning uh, referring relations and we achieved results uh, that were a significant improvement on uh, previous uh, models for this task. Okay, uh, so that's what I wanted to say about uh, mapping images to uh, scene graphs with uh, full supervision and perhaps also with uh, partial uh, supervision. Uh, the next uh, thing that we got interested in is the reverse direction, namely how can you uh, generate images from scene graph, and this is uh, recent work with uh, Roy Herzig, Amir Bar, uh, Shu, uh, Trevor Darrell, and uh, Gal Chechik uh, in CCV. Uh, so, you know, image generation is an exciting field. There's a lot of uh, uh, recent work. It's nice to generate things that look uh, real. Uh, and there's, uh, there's nice progress on uh, unconditional generation. Namely, you ask the model to generate something. I mean, it could be in a class of, say, faces or dogs, but you don't tell it which dog or, uh, uh, you know, which uh, uh, burger to, to generate. Uh, right, so there's obviously uh, a lot of interest in being able to generate things that, uh, where we provide a description for the thing that we want to generate, okay? So it could be generate uh, a person with a beard and uh, without glasses. Uh, so this uh, controlled image generation is a, is a huge uh, challenge. Uh, I think uh, we're quite far from uh, fully uh, realizing that uh, challenge. Uh, so, but this is, was what we were interested in in this context. Uh, so there's some work on uh, conditioning on uh, segmentation maps uh, where you have some nice results. But really it would be uh, the, the, maybe the most challenging thing is to condition on semantics, saying, like I said before, uh, draw me a picture of uh, two dogs uh, in a lake, okay? Um, now, scene graphs are a very natural uh, uh, structure for doing this, right? Because you can provide a scene graph and ask the, the algorithm or the model to generate an image that has the same semantics described in the scene graph, okay? For example, uh, here. So, Johnson et al. Uh, presented this uh, task in a, a, 
a couple of years ago uh, with an initial uh, model, but uh, there's still a lot uh, to, of progress to be made in order for these uh, generated images to be uh, realistic, like the ones we see in uncontrolled generation. Uh, okay. So basically, this is the task that we were focused on here. Uh, here's just uh, another example. So you have uh, the pink uh, uh, cubes uh, describe uh, objects, and the, uh, the blue um, uh, rectangles uh, describe uh, relations. And the goal is, given this description of a scene graph, generate an image that obeys the semantics of the uh, scene graph. Uh, OK, so that's what we set out to do. Um, and when we thought about this uh, problem, and again, how to model this, how to think of the architecture of the, the models for this task, we noticed this uh, curious uh, uh, challenge or property. Uh, so uh, that has to do with semantic equivalence. So for example, if you consider this scene graph, saying there's a man on the chair, OK? Uh, so that's a scene graph describing a simple semantic uh, relation. But now there are other scene graphs that describe exactly the same relation, right? If there's a chair under man, that's exactly the same as man on chair, right? So these two scene graphs are essentially describing the same uh, semantic reality. And there's another uh, graph that describes exactly the same thing. And then it occurred to us that current scene graph to image models, actually, if you give them these three different graphs, they would generate three different images. Although we know, uh, we know that these, they should generate exactly the same image because the semantics is the same. Okay, so the quick question we ask is how we can build, how can we build scene graph to image models uh, that generate the same output for all these equivalent scene graphs? Okay? So we called it the challenge of semantic equivalence. Uh, so here's one approach, sort of simple, uh, conceptually simple approach to build a model that has this property of, of capturing this equivalence. So here's what you can do. A given scene graph has many equivalent representations. I just showed you three in the previous slide. Uh, so given an input graph, an input scene graph, let's consider the set of all equivalent scene graphs that describe exactly the same semantics and just choose one of, from this set, do, just choose one canonical uh, scene graph. And every time we encounter this uh, set of equivalences, we'll just use the same canonical form, right? So if we do that, it's clear that all equivalent graphs will result in the same image because they will all be converted to the same canonical form. So just to illustrate this again, uh, let's say this uh, uh, red ellipse is uh, all the scene graphs corresponding to man on chair. We had three of those. And then the blue is all scene graphs for man on table, which is something else uh, semantically. Okay? And then in each of these uh, ellipses, we'll choose one particular scene graph that is the canonical one. Right? And then if we have some input uh, scene graph that might not be the canonical one, we sort of understand which ellipse is it in, and then we return, uh, we use the canonical uh, scene graph, okay? So from this point on, we just work with the canonical form. And then by definition, every time we, we work with this in the same equivalence class, we'll just uh, map to the canonical form and then therefore produce the same image, okay? So that's basically the, uh, the idea. OK, so then the question is how to technically uh, do that. Uh, and there were multiple challenges involved. Uh, the first, you know, the key thing is how do you choose this canonical uh, form? And a natural idea in this context is just choose the scene graph that contains all relations implied by this uh, semantic uh, uh, situation. OK, so for example, OK, so I should say generally this is a hard problem. And in some cases, uh, it can be done uh, efficiently. So for example, if you have a relation man on chair, uh, then, uh, uh, and we know that under is the converse relation of on, then uh, this uh, would be the completion of all uh, uh, things true uh, in this uh, semantic equivalence class. Uh, uh, another example is transitive relations. So for example, if you have man on chair on floor, then uh, the canonical form would be to complete uh, the, all the transitive edges, okay? So that's basically uh, our, our approach to canonicalizing uh, scene graphs. Basically add all edges that have to be true in, a, in this uh, semantic uh, uh, state. Okay, uh, so the problem with what I just said, I mean it works fine if you know which uh, relations are transitive and which are converse. Uh, usually, uh, or in some cases, you do not. So there was a challenge to learn which ones which of our relations are transitive and which are converse. Of course, there's a bigger challenge to understand uh, even uh, uh, you know, more uh, extensive forms of uh, relations and how they uh, interact and what is the correct closure for these. But in this work, we focused on transitive and converse uh, relations. 
Uh, so uh, we address this learning problem, understanding uh, which uh, uh, you know the properties of the relations in our uh, graph, and we built a learning uh, uh, method uh, for for learning which which uh, relations are what, and we did it in a soft way. So uh, a given relation could be like 0.9 transitive, uh, etc. Uh, okay. Uh, so just in terms of uh, some uh, results, uh, here are, uh, you can see the origi an original image on, uh, at the bottom. Uh, then that image has a corresponding scene graph. And then you, we take that scene graph and generate an image from that. Okay? So the algorithm, what, uh, the second row, uh, that's our output. It doesn't see the original image, of course. It just sees the scene graph corresponding to that image. And you see that it captures, uh, uh, in some cases, fairly nicely the, the semantics of, of the image. Again, bear in mind that it doesn't see the original image. So it just has to recreate something that semantically agrees with uh, the, the original image. And the first row is uh, the, the original uh, approach by Johnson uh, et al. And uh, I think our, our images are uh, uh, clearer uh, semantically and uh, visually. And we also evaluated this on human annotators and via different uh, 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 quality measures. Uh, another nice thing is that, that you can do with these uh, scene graph to image models is that you can edit. So for example, if in the left, the left scene graph corresponds to the bottom image, then you can take, say, just one uh, uh, node in the scene graph and change it from a purple large uh, sphere to a yellow uh, large uh, cube and change the material, et cetera. And you can see these are outputs from our algorithm. And you see that the editing is, is quite nice. It doesn't change anything except that uh, particular place where you edited. And it edits the image uh, uh, appropriately. OK. Uh, so I just want to, uh, for the last part, talk briefly about uh, the, the challenge of video. Uh, obviously, uh, 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 as challenging as images and, and more. Uh, and uh, OK, so this is a recent work with uh, Roy uh, uh, Amir, Trevor Darrell, and Gal Chechik uh, uh, that uh, is on archive. Uh, so I spoke about image generation before. It's obviously the uh, more challenging question of generating uh, video. Uh, there's a lot of work on that. Uh, more progress to be made. Uh, so I talked about controlled image generation, so the, the corresponding task for controlled video generation, namely generate for me a video that has a particular uh, content, like a man chasing uh, another man uh, 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 who's entering a car, for example. Uh, so we tried to, uh, our, our goal was to make initial steps towards uh, this direction. And uh, we, we formulated what we referred to as the action graph to video task, namely where the way you specify the contact, the desired contact content of the, the video is via a set of objects and the actions they perform along with the times where these actions are performed. Okay? Uh, right, and this is uh, uh, what we want to do. And uh, basically, we, we uh, uh, proposed an approach to this using a notion of clocked edges. Uh, and this works quite well in generating novel content. Uh, and you can go to the paper for uh, details. Uh, and we evaluated this uh, and compared to uh, various benchmarks, also human evaluation and quality metrics. And it works uh, quite well. OK, so to conclude, uh, I talked about scene graphs being natural structures for capturing semantics. Uh, they can be used for image understanding and generation. Uh, and the next frontier is obviously uh, video. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Professor Glogozon. Uh, I have two questions from the audience. The first one is by, from uh, Ofer Idan. The question is, can this technology allow to generate short video from a description? Yeah, so this is the, the third part uh, okay, addresses so. that where, uh, no, I mean, uh, I presented sort of first steps towards it where we uh, generate uh, a combination of actions. Okay. So presumably this is uh, where this is, could go. Is, this is the future. Another question is from Shimon Cohen. Why not minimum span tree? For what uh, task? Uh, so the well, graphs, I mean, uh, the graphs, I'm not sure if that's the question, but you want graphs because there are some uh, uh, natural semantic structures that don't correspond to trees. So I'm not sure trees would be the right uh, okay. structure here. Last question from Eric Wasserman. If you have a several objects of the same kind, for example, a ball, and different size, does the generation generator uh, know which ball to choose for the image? 
how does the algorithm decide which side to take? So in, in the graph, you would have three nodes for these three balls, each with its own attributes. So yeah. that, that would be specified. OK. Thank you, Professor Glogozan. <laughs>